our beloved deacon, Roosevelt Johnson, went on home to glory. He earned his wings earlier this week. And it was heavy on my heart because I had an opportunity to be with him before he expired, a couple days before he expired. And he had been trying to get to me. And one day he called me and it was raining that day. He says, Pastor, are you at home? He wrote was never came to my eyes. I just went home. I said, yeah, I'm home. He says, do you have an umbrella? Come on out. I, I want to see you. When he told me he wanted to see me, I realized that his time here was limited. So I went outside in my hoodie, and Dean Rose was about 6'2", about 300 pounds. He was a pulling guard for the University of Houston, pulling guard for the Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Wade. Big brother. He was my armor bearer. Yes. And to look in that car and see him under 90 pounds, it just tore me up. I couldn't cry in front of him. I got in the house with me and my wife. We balled together. But I needed to hear that song that praises what I do because in the midst of knowing that young man, and I see a young man suffered for so long, battling cancer, eating his body away, that now we can have joy because his homegoing celebration is this coming Friday at 1 o'clock. So please come. Please come. And embrace the family a little bit. It's going to be all right. He's in a better place now. There's no more pain, no more sorrow, no more cancer. He's in a better place. So I'm telling you, I needed to hear that. His praise is what I do. Even in the midst of lost praise is what I do. Because I know God is merciful. God is graceful. And God knows what we need when we need it. Amen. Amen. Now for the word. Amen. So today I won't be before you uh, too long. 
we're going to cover three things. Why we owe God more, how we give God more, and the result of giving God more. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all all right? Yeah. All right. So let me, let me be clear before I even get into this. Um, I owe God everything. No, 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 no. I don't think y'all understand. I owe God everything. Everything. How many people in here know that you owe God everything? All of us have some. Tell your neighbor, I owe God everything. If God has been there for anybody like he has been for me and you, you need to get up and give God some praise today. Says, if we live for the Lord and if 
we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Next, I want everybody to close your eyes. Everybody, close your eyes. And think about all the areas in your life that you're thankful for. Just take a minute. Take a minute and spend some time with God. Think about every area in your life that you're thankful for. Amen. And now, think about some areas in your life where you know you can give God more. This is between you and God. Stop giving so much of ourselves to people that don't care nothing about Woo! us to begin with. How about that? I see so many of y'all with clapping. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me. I do you like y'all though. Second, we need to focus on our relationship with God and pray to him and ask him to remove anything from our hearts that may threaten our relationship with him. Let me give you a quick little testimony. Uh, when I stopped smoking and drinking, I lost about 97% of my friends. <laughs> and, and honestly, it bothered me a bit at first. And I was like, I thought that we were, you know, I thought that we were my people, but um, it kind of brought me to a low place, and I was confused, and I felt alone, and really didn't know what direction to go, but God, but God told me in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope for the future. And that's just what he did. But I could have never got closer to God's plan for my life if I would have never gave God more. And that's so important. I'm a walking testimony because you know, on the block they used to say, if you're scared, go to church. <laughs> <laughs> they still do. But you know what I was scared of? Getting to Judgment Day and wishing I could have come on my show. Come on. Yeah. I was scared of being in the same place I was in 10 years ago. Come on, that's it. That's it. I was scared of trying to solve all my problems on my own. Yes, I was scared of ignoring the path that I know God has for me. I was scared of being strung out or laid out in the street. But most importantly, I was scared of dying without fulfilling God's purpose. But God. But God. But God. But God, but God. God said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. And through that sound mind, you can give God your time. Tell three people, one, two, three, three people with a sound mind, you can give God your time. With the sound of 
brother about me, you just think I'm playing with you. <laughs> Glorify your faith. Amen. 
I dare you to. Post something on social media about your faith today. Because I know in about an hour time, everybody going to be on social media. Anyway. <laughs> but post something about your faith. Post something about how God has blessed you. I dare you to talk about how blessed God has made in your life and how blessed God has got you through these dark areas. I challenge you. Now, has anybody in here ever been stuck between who they used to be and who they know God called them to be? Nobody over here? <laughs>
When we surrender our lives to God, He does more than we could ever imagine. He takes our weaknesses and turns them into strengths. He takes our brokenness and makes us whole. He takes our pain and gives us purpose. Because sometimes the enemy will try you. He will test you. Through other people and situations. And the more and more you try to give to God, the more the enemy will try to attack your mind. I guarantee you. Number two, purpose and direction. Jesus provides us a clear purpose and direction in our lives, guiding your decisions and actions according to his will. He gives us strength, number three, in difficult times. Through faith in Jesus, you gain strength to endure and overcome hardships. Man, I'm going to tell you, I went to the state fair yesterday. What was that yesterday? The day before yesterday. And I saw my house. Here go Miles in the back, throwing his hand up. And uh, Miles just suffered a loss, and I was so happy to see you, Miles. I think I might have hugged you like five, six times. <laughs> but I, I, I hugged you because I've been through loss, and I want you to know that we're not just up here just talking. Like, we love you, man. We care for you, and this is a foundation. People come here to get healed. I'm, listen. Come on. I felt that loss. Every loss that comes through this church, we all feel. And that's why it's so important. The next one, unconditional love. When you're experiencing Jesus' unconditional love, it can transform your self-worth and how you view others. Um, and then next, freedom from sin. Committing to Jesus, you receive forgiveness and freedom from the burden of sin leading to a renewed life. The next one is a foundation for fellowship, and this is kind of what I was thinking about with you, uh, Miles, because being a part of the body of Christ, it connects you to a supportive community, yes. like a foundation that shares the same faith with you, and everybody in here is going through something. Oh. Everybody. But don't be afraid. This is a foundation. Don't go through these things by yourself. Always know, always know that you have God's people here. When I first got saved, I felt so weird and alone because I was experiencing this new version of the world and of God and of myself. And it felt just, it felt like I was alone on that walk. But the benefit of having a foundation for fellowship helped me so much. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> Pastor, Marsha, everybody here will wrap their arms around me. <coughs> So just know that we always here. The joy and fulfillment. Living for Jesus brings us a deep joy and fulfillment that goes beyond temporary pleasures or material success. And honestly, after a while, if you haven't been living for Jesus, who you been living for? It's okay, I wouldn't expect any other response. To that. Moral and, moral and ethical guidance. Jesus' teachings provide moral and ethical framework that helps us make decisions aligned with love, justice, and righteousness. Number 10, last one, empowerment to serve. Giving our all to Jesus inspires and empowers you to make, or empowers you to serve others, making a positive impact on the world around you. In conclusion, let us remember the power of those two words, but God, but God, but God, when we were lost, he found us, when we were broken, he healed us, when we were without hope, he gave us a future, and let us give him more because he has given us everything, 
Let us spend time with him, seek his will, and allow his power to transform our lives. And may we leave here today with a renewed commitment to honor God with our lives, to prioritize our relationship with him, and to give him praise and the glory he deserves and the honor that he so richly requires.